I can't talk about the stuff I'm doing now, but at Uber in the past, um, I built this like huge email IDS system in uh, Lambda functions all in AWS. It's really cool, like took apart all these emails. And at some point, uh, because we were doing all this like large scale phishing detection, we started hearing of these phishing campaigns that were targeting the drivers of uh, Uber. And it would basically be these people and they would contact the drivers. They would first request a ride, they'd get the ride matched up with the, the driver. And then they would instantly call the driver and say, hey, we're from Uber official and uh, you've won some kind of raffle or something. And when you, you go to this website and log in, yeah, totally bogus. So they'd go to the website and be like uberbonus.com and they'd log in and uh, it'd be phishing and they'd steal their credentials and then they'd log into the driver's account and cash them out right away and take all their money. Um, oh, wow. That's actually yeah, yeah. pretty smart. <laughs> as far as a yeah. phishing campaign goes, that's that's not a bad one. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm it terrible, works, man. But cool. Yeah. It, Jesus, it, it okay. absolutely worked. These guys made tons of money. Um, and it's interesting, too, because when you're doing like corporate cybersecurity, obviously your job is to protect the customers, but your real job is to protect the company, right? So, like, yeah. this kind of phishing campaign gets deprioritized, like, because it's the drivers be, be being defrauded. It's not like the corporation themselves. At first, you know, the corporation didn't even want to like really cover the costs. They were like, oh, well, you know, that's your fault. Like if somebody logs into your bank, right? But they were logging into our app. So uh, we pushed really hard internally to like reimburse these people and then also like start tracking the losses of this campaign because it was getting deprioritized because um, people didn't see it as a big threat to like the business itself. Yeah. Um, so we started tracking this campaign and uh, over the course of a few months, like we saw them go from like zero to $40,000, like really quickly, like Whoa. they stole a ton of money. Yeah. Jesus, um, they weren't messing about. Yeah. So we put together this big report. Uh, we tried to get the FBI involved. The FBI is like $40,000. That's nothing guys. Yeah. Uh, no, they didn't want I should get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh it was God. kind of like a really took the wind out of our sails you know what i mean um but we kept tracking it and it was really fun like every day they'd stand up a new fishing site and we'd uh report the fishing site to try and get it taken down um we implemented a filter in the chat system so that they could no longer text these sites to people like through the the app um we would block all urls and then we got really creative and I, uh, I released a book last year called Adversarial Tradecraft and Cybersecurity, and I actually talk about this exact technique in the book. And I wouldn't do this in normal operations. Like what I'm, what I'm about to say is pretty crazy sounding. Um, but when you have these long-term campaigns and you know somebody is like stealing some piece of data and you can't really like stop them other way, like every day, like we would block these sites and they'd come back. Uh, you kind of have to start to get inside their thought process and like attack the way they're designing their campaign. So what we realized they were doing is they would clone the Uber login page every day or the Uber homepage. Um, and then they would basically run this copy of our site that was sent them all the answers and all the phishing. So what we did is we backdoored the JavaScript in the Uber login page, like the homepage. And we said, yeah. if this JavaScript is getting loaded on something that isn't uber.com, I also want you to send all of the credentials that log in there to this endpoint. <laughs> um, so they, they clone our website. You hacked the we hackers. No longer, <laughs> oh, it's so good, dude. It was so good. We no longer would block awesome. their sites. They would, we'd let them clone our sites and then the victims would get fished. And what they would do is they would collect all these credentials. And then at the end of the day, they would have people manually log in and like cash these people out. Meanwhile, we had everything fully automated. So the moment our people logged into this foreign page and got fished, we applied 2FA to their accounts and sent them a password reset email. So yeah. now like we were inside their like decision loop, like, uh, yeah, like we hacked the hackers. So they would <laughs> so fish all these people I and the it. accounts would be instantly locked. And I'm sure they were just going mad, like what is happening? Not yeah. only that, but we had all kinds of cool telemetry because now they would like edit the web page locally on their laptop. They would get the IP that they were working from locally and we'd get like file path names. So we'd have like usernames leading to the desktop where they're working yeah. on the web page. It's great. Did, did some people get arrested? 
Yeah, unfortunately. Like, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. Wow, okay, that is um, actually crazy, but uh, that's a freaking cool story. I think that tops my, yeah. my best stories <laughs> I've heard this, like, in the last two years of hacking the hackers. That's brilliant. <laughs> Fuck, I love it. Yeah. It's <laughs> it blown away. <laughs> We, it's like we fishing the, the fishes campaign. and hacking the hackers and oh my god straight up yeah That's it was, so cool <laughs> it was a good one um and like i wouldn't recommend doing that to most people like yeah backdoor your app like your your website Absolutely source code not. Like, no. <laughs> sounds crazy <laughs> but it worked was was it like localized at least was it just like to this particular area or was it just like not nah, everywhere <laughs> yeah it was everywhere man and everywhere was, oh my god it was funny too because like you probably found some stuff that like you didn't even mean to find out of that as well i'm, I'm <laughs> sure there was some more you know findings out of this um oh my god that's so that's insane i was, I was yeah. gonna ask you next like what's your best war story but um <laughs> yeah, like, have you got anything better than that that's crazy <laughs> 